of this city. I will seek justice on your behalf. This is a moment. This is your moment. Let's ensure that we have peaceful and productive rallies that will develop structural and systemic changes for generations to come. You're at the forefront of this cause. And as young people, our time is now. That was Baltimore State's attorney, Marilyn Mosby, speaking yesterday with a special, special message for the young people of the city who have been raising their voices this week in the response to the death of Freddie Gray. Joining my panel now in New York is Dave Zirin, sports editor of The Nation magazine. Also, one of those young activists is joining me now from Baltimore. Dave Von Love is co-founder of Leaders of a Beautiful hey, Struggle. Hey, well, what up? What up, <laughs> And members of the Baltimore United Coalition. I'm sorry, my whole table is going crazy. Dave Von Mark Steiner and Lester Spence are here, and I'm, apparently y'all all know each other a lot. <laughs> so, so Dave Von, um, Devon, talk to me a little bit. What has been the response of young people in Baltimore? I, I think initially I would not have expected that, um, that while we were having this conversation, there would be this kind of enthusiasm at the table. Um, but in fact, it looks like the comments yesterday from Mosby really have changed the, the, the feeling and tenor of what's happening. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the things that I think was most beautiful about yesterday um, was just the display, the public displays of just love and camaraderie, particularly amongst black folks. Um, I went to Pennsylvania North Avenue um, where, you know, it, it's a historic place. Um, it's a place where, you know, in the 50s you had a lot of, you know, black artists and, 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 and mm -hmm. social institutions that were there. Right. And what was, to me, what was so amazing was to see at Penn North, where now you see a lot of boys Boarded up, boarded up housing, you see a lot of the problems that people associate with urban America, but what you saw, what you saw black people out in the streets, you know, celebrating, you know, hugging each other. You know, we actually went out there and were uh, giving away food um, and giving away pamphlets that um, had information about how to deal with law enforcement, um, you know, just talking about the work that we're doing and getting people's information. Um, so it was, it was just such a beautiful scene and, and to me what was a, an amazing contrast was contrasting that with the level of, of, of military Militarization around mm -hmm. it. So while you have all these black folks that are embracing each other, loving each other, affirming each other, in the presence of that, it almost seems like, you know, the institution of civil society doesn't want us to do that, mm -hmm. given all the military presence around. Let me let me ask you about a, a, another uh, kind of clear um, difference here, and that is, you know, from the early days, uh, from from Monday and Tuesday, there was a lot of conversation of Ferguson and Ferguson in the context of Baltimore, um, and it does feel to me like when you see this mayor elected in part by the black political power in this city, when you see this attorney who clearly has a sense of not only sort of personal but electoral connection to this community at least at the moment we're having very very different responses from that city government we don't know what it's all going to end up being but but you know sort of the Ferguson comparison now falls apart completely and I guess I'm wondering how you um, how you build on that in the activism the kind of ongoing activism that will go on after the cameras leave well, I mean, I think there's an important distinction to be made um, between our mayor, Steffi Rollins-Blake, and a city state's attorney, Marilyn J. Mosby. Mm -hmm. um, many people, I think, would say that our, our mayor is someone who has capitulated to the corporate structure of the Democratic Party um, and many of the corporate interests in this city. Um, and I think as we see what happens, you know, in our society writ large is that oftentimes individual black people are put in positions of power, leadership and white control dominating institutions, which brings more black people into those institutional arrangements, which undermines our ability to develop a kind of communal, independent black institution building as the basis of our work. And so Marilyn Mosby being elected um, was important because she was elected, as was alluded to earlier, for the purpose of prosecuting law enforcement officials. And she didn't get the same kind of corporate support. You know, no, she, she was didn't. outspent. That's right tremendously by the incumbent um, but she was able to get the grassroots support she needed and I think this is what kind of gives her um, and it was very courageous of her to do what she did yesterday but I think she knows the kind of support she has behind her um, and that's important that's an important contrast and I think if I could just say something else really quickly because um, I think the Ferguson comparison is important because I think people reduce racism to individual mm -hmm. you know white folks in leadership black people who are succumbed to white folks and I think Baltimore shows the sophistication of white supremacy and how it operates how it 
government takes black figures, put them in institutional positions to give the veneer of justice when really the same institutional arrangement exists. Devon Love, uh, you just uh, dropped the mic so hard on that um, racial structural dissertation provided live on air. I ain't even going to come to the panel. I'm just going to let the panel breathe in the commercial break, uh, and then I'm going to let them respond when we come back. Devon Love in Baltimore, Maryland. Damn. <laughs> That's it.